Many people are searching to find out who they are. Did you know that you can find yourself in the Bible? When you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you are saved. And the Bible has many things to say about who you are once you've made that decision. One thing it says is that you're a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, So that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now what is brand new? Your spirit, right? It's like you have a brand new spirit. It's like starting all over again. Now, there's a good example in the Old Testament about this. Do you remember when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and the Egyptians decided after all these, all these um, plagues and troubles that they were going to let the Israelites go free? And so the Israelites left Egypt and they were all far, far away from Egypt. And then the Egyptians decided, oh, no, we, we have to go get them. And so they left Egypt and they were chasing the, they, they, they chased the Israelites down and they were getting ready to capture them again and make them slaves again. But God parted the Red Sea and had the Israelites cross over on dry ground to get away from the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians tried to cross through the same path that the Israelites had gone, but God closed the sea back up at that time and all the Egyptians were washed away. And the Israelites could stand there on the, on the shore, safe on their shore, and look back and their, their enemies were completely gone. They were standing on new ground. They could breathe. And no enemies were around them and they were safe. They were secure and they were free. That's what it's like when you're saved. The old has gone and it's all has, is brand new. The old things are past. Now Colossians 1.13 says that he, God, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And the next verse says, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, meaning in Jesus, he were redeemed and we've been forgiven. And God has moved us. We, he's rescued us out of, the, of, of darkness. And now he's moved us into the kingdom of light, into where his son lives. And so the old you is a thing of the past. Your old sinful self is gone, dead. It's like it's been washed under the water. And now you can take the old you back up again if you want. But the more you decide to put all your attention on surrendering to Jesus, reading the Bible and doing what it tells you to do, then you'll become the new you. Every day that you wake up, you make the decision whether you're going to live for Jesus or ignore him. Now, if you continue to ignore him, and this means that you're not talking to God, you're not reading his words to you in the Bible, you're not thinking about Jesus, then you're going to slide it back into those old behaviors because that was your habit. That's what you know to do. You're still saved at this point, but you're not happy because you're giving Satan territory in your life. Remember, you decide who's the boss over your life. Is it God or is it Satan? Jesus said Satan had nothing in him. Jesus gave Satan no territory in his life. Now, we don't want to surrender any part of ourselves either. We don't want to surrender to Satan. And how can that even happen once you're saved? Well, we can let that happen by letting sin be the boss of any part of our life. Maybe we do well in most things, but... You know, we treat others badly. Maybe we lie. Maybe we cheat. Maybe it's thinking bad thoughts about ourselves, or thinking bad thoughts about somebody else. Maybe we think bad thoughts about God. Maybe it's letting fear into our thoughts. Remember, you're new. You're different. Your sin nature is gone, but your thoughts need to be trained. Let's read Romans 12 too. 
It says, don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. In, in some translations, it says that we need to renew our minds. And we renew our minds by reading God's word. And when we have a thought that disagrees with God's word, then we're going to take that thought out and we're going to speak God's word in its place. For example, say you're afraid to ask your friend to church. You say, no, I take that thought and I'm giving it to Jesus. It has to obey him. I do not want that thought because God says his perfect love casts out fear. God says he didn't give me a spirit of fear. He said that I have a spirit of power, I have a spirit of love, and I have a, a sound mind. Now, reading the Bible is allowing God to speak to you. Those words are there for you to be built up in knowledge, in love, and in faith. They're there for you to act on. It's hearing the word and doing it that makes you a wise man. Remember, the wise man built his house upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus. That rock is God's word. The more you decide to put all your attention on surrendering to Jesus and doing what he tells you to do, the new you will become stronger and stronger. Ready? Say it with me. I am a new creation. The old is gone. Say it again. I am a new creation.